Okay, uh, in order to um, talk about impingement syndrome, we need to be familiar with the anatomy of the scapula. Uh, so the um, spine of the scapula uh, travels and ends up becoming the acromion. Um, some patients actually have a really sharp curved acromion and that makes them more prone to impingement. Uh, then we have the uh, glenoid fossa. You can see how shallow of a, a concavity that is. Um, and then uh, we have the coracoid process and uh, the clavicle, which is not part of the scapula, but the clavicle, which joins the acromion to form the acromioclavicular joint. So the um, head of the humerus fits into the socket. Uh, it's a ball and socket joint and um, the minimal bone structure actually is what allows us the degrees of freedom that we have in our shoulder. Um, our hip is a better socket with the acetabulum but our hip does not cross our body this far or abduct um, 180 degrees or flex 180 degrees um, nor does it, it probably doesn't extend um, half as far as our shoulder either. Uh, so at risk of um, more uh, instability in the shoulder, we have more mobility. So um, it again is at risk because of that mobility. <clears throat> so it relies heavily on the muscles. Well, um, the muscles of the rotator cuff attach to the head of the humerus in order to stabilize it and it increases that um, that socket to to support and hold and stabilize the head of the humerus. Um, the glenoid was actually um, uh, compared to uh, the tee of a golf ball so you'd have the small tee with the the golf ball sitting on it um, but the advantage that the golf ball has is gravity whereas your humeral head does not have gravity in its favor. Um, so the muscles of the scapula, which comprise the rotator cuff muscles, um, are the supraspinatus, which travels underneath the acromion and the, um, the acromioclavicular joint and attaches to the head of the humerus. And if you see the line uh, of pull uh, that it would have when it contracted, you can see that it assists or initiates abduction of the shoulder. The infraspinatus and the teres minor um, attach at the greater tuberosity and this is one of the reasons that active range of motion is um, a precaution, maybe not a restriction, but a precaution after a shoulder uh, humeral fracture because it could pull on the fracture fragments. Um, and so the, um, the line of pull is in a slight downward but a posterior angle and therefore it's going to externally rotate the head of the humerus or the humerus itself. And then um, on the anterior side of the scapula, but it, it's still posterior, your scapula is behind you, but on the anterior surface is the um, subscapularis and the subscapularis um, attaches to the lesser tuberosity of the humerus and uh, the line of pull again is a little bit downward but um, uh, it's going to medially rotate or internally rotate the, um, the humerus. When all those muscles work together um, because you have external rotators and internal rotators uh, working on that, um, what's going to happen is it's going to pull um, pull the head of the humerus in towards the glenoid so it really helps to keep it from um, or stabilizing it keeping it from uh, popping out of the uh, glenoid but also um, as it pulls it in deeper it allows more room for the deltoid to then act as an abductor or um, the anterior deltoid to flex the, uh, the shoulder.